Hi guys, I know many of you are new to AWS and potentially new to IT, so you may not have a background in databases. And what I wanted to do is just provide a bit of a 101 on databases. Now, this is structured towards the types of databases that exist in AWS, but this is not specifically exam material. This is more about just giving you a bit of a background about the different types of database. And I think this will help you a lot in understanding the different offerings that AWS have and working out in which situations you would use one database type over another one. So the first thing I wanted to look at is the difference between relational and non-relational databases. So it really is about the way that the data is managed and how the data is stored. And I'll show you a couple of examples to make it a bit more visual. But we have these two broad categories. So we've got relational and non-relational. In a relational database, data is organized by tables, rows, and columns, and it has a very rigid schema. So that means the definition of how data is stored in the database is very rigid. So it's defined, and then it has to be adhered to. And those rules, as I say, are enforced in the database. You scale these databases vertically, and we'll see a bit more about what that means later on. But in simple terms, it means that if you have a database server and you need to scale it, then you need to add more CPU, more storage, more memory, etc. Relational databases do support something called complex queries and joins. Again, you don't really need to know some of this stuff for the cloud practitioner. You certainly do when you get to architect level or any of the associate certifications. But it basically means that you can perform queries across, across multiple tables. Examples of this are Amazon RDS, which we'll be covering in this section and then Oracle, MySQL, IBM DB2, and PostgreSQL. So those are all types of relational database. With non-relational databases, the very, you have a varied data storage model. And that means you have this thing called a NoSQL or a flexible schema. So the schema is not rigid like it is in relational databases. Data can be stored in a number of formats, and I'll show you a slide to make that a bit more clear. But these can be, for instance, key value pairs, columns, documents, or graphs. You can define the rules rather than in the database, but in the application itself. So that means it's less rigid. You don't have to define it all up front. Instead, you can modify application code if you need to make some changes. With non-relational databases, you scale horizontally. So that means rather than adding more CPU, RAM, storage to an individual EC2 instance or an individual computer of some sort, you add more servers in parallel. So they, the load gets spread across them. So with non-relational, the data is unstructured. Examples are DynamoDB, that's covered in this section, and then some of the other ones available, MongoDB, Redis, and Neo4j. So that's just a quick overview of relational versus non-relational. Let's have a look at some examples. So this is an example of a relational database it's essentially a table, and the table has certain attributes in it, and every one of those needs to be populated. You can then query that table using what we call SQL, so structured query language. And these can get really complex. You know, this is quite a simple one that just says, look for the first name from the employees table, and then find users who have the location set to Sydney. But what you can have is relational databases with multiple tables. So for instance, here, one table has the relationship status and the political views of this user. Another one has the phone number. Another one has the company name. So you could perform a complex query that finds information across those different tables. We then have examples of non-relational databases. So DynamoDB is this one here, where let's say you have some products and then you have a sort key so you can sort by the book ID, the album ID, and so on. But then you have the attributes, and you can see that the attributes are different for different rows in the table. So for instance, you didn't even have to put an, a response in here. There's no entry for this second item here in the, in the last attribute. Whereas in a relational database, all of those attributes must be populated. You then have a graph database. This is where it's relationships between people. So a good example of that would be Facebook. You then have a document type of database, which is, uses JSON, so JavaScript object notation. So it's 
written into the code. Another distinction you need to understand are the differences between what we call operational and analytical databases. And here the difference is about the use cases, so how you use the database and how the database has been optimized. So when we say operational, we're talking about things like the transactional database that a website might have where you go shopping and you buy something and so the customer information, the order, gets put into a database. That would be your operational database. And then your analytical database would be the one where you actually perform some analytics at the end of the year, for instance, to find out what are your customers' buying habits. So for the operational transactional databases, this is called online transaction processing. And for the analytical databases, it's known as online analytics processing. So you might see these acronyms, OLTP, and OLAP. The OLAP, the source data, comes from these databases. So in that example, for instance, you have customers who are shopping, and I've got a diagram here. So maybe these are your databases distributed around the country. These are the operational databases. And they're receiving data from the applications. So when a customer orders, information goes into the different databases. And then you want to perform some complex queries to find out what are your customers' buying habits. You can then copy your data into a data warehouse, so this is an analytical type of database, and then perform queries on it. And so the benefits of doing it this way are, firstly, you can offload the processing. You can gather all this data into one place from different databases, and you're not going to put a load onto your production database and slow it down. But also, these databases are optimized for this type of query. So you can perform these types of queries in a more optimal way than you would if you use a relational database. So good examples of operational databases are RDS, Oracle, IBM DB2, and MySQL, and those are the relational examples. And then you might have MongoDB, Cassandra, Neo4j, and HBase as non-relational examples. Now again, the ones that you need to understand for the exam are just Amazon RDS, and then in the analytical space, Amazon Redshift, we're gonna cover that. And there's a couple of other examples here, including Amazon EMR, which is a good example of an analytical database, which uses Hadoop. So hopefully that all made sense. And I think that will help you to understand a bit better the services that I'm going to describe in the rest of the section.